Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and welcome to Sound Explained Phase Relations. In the previous Sound Explained videos, we have taken a good look at how digital audio waveforms work. Some of the information from the previous videos will be very important to your understanding of phase relations. So if you haven't already, I highly suggest you go back and watch through the previous Sound Explained videos before continuing. To observe phase relations, let's start with the most simple waveform. A sine wave. So if you were to play two sine waves at the same frequency, you might think that, you know, 1 plus 1 should equal 2. So if you play them both at the same time, they should equal a sine wave with twice the amplitude. And sometimes this is what happens. But sometimes this isn't what happens. You can hear when I play these two sine waves that sound exactly the same. You get silence. And sometimes the result isn't so drastic. And you can hear that when I play these two. They aren't quite as loud as when I play these two. even though all three waveforms sound exactly the same. And this is because, if you remember from the first sound explained, we have both positive and negative amplitude values in our audio waveforms. So sometimes the positive amplitude values for one waveform will align with the negative values of another. And if we look at this example again, you'll see when I overlay these oscilloscopes of the two different waveforms, that all the positive values of one are equal to the negative values of the other, and vice versa. So when you add all of these values up, at every given point the amplitude is going to be zero. And so you end up with silence. And you can see with the other example, some of the positive values align with positive values of the other waveform, but some of the positive values also align with negative values for the other waveform. So you're getting some amount of phase cancellation, but it's not a complete cancellation. So when you add different waveforms together, you're always adding positive values and negative values at different times. And if the frequencies are far enough apart, it's not really going to cause any problems. So you can see here I have a waveform with a much higher frequency than this waveform. And the positive and negative values are reacting with the original waveform in such a way that it doesn't really affect the sound of the original waveform, it's just kind of adding itself into it, which you can see down here. But when the frequencies are much closer together, you will have some amount of phasing going on. And this is essentially detune. So you can see that this waveform is moving in comparison with this one. And as it moves, the positive values and the negative values will add differently to the original sound, which causes that pulsing sound. And in the case that your frequencies are exactly the same, it will all depend on the phase of the two sounds. If you remember from an earlier Sound Explained video, all sounds can be dissected into sine waves at varying amplitudes frequencies, and times. So you're always going to have these positive and negative values affecting each other. And you're always going to have some amount of phase cancellation going on. A lot of the time it's really subtle and doesn't really cause a problem. But sometimes you will notice that it does cause a problem. And your kick might eat your snare, for example, 
or any number of other things could happen. And in another video in this section of the tutorial, I will be giving you a bit more information on how you can detect phasing issues that are a problem and how to correct them and just get the best phase relationships possible between your sounds in your mix.